sponsors here speaking on behalf of Factory Magazine. Well, that's an interesting one, isn't it? What is happening in terms of fashion? Well, I mean, there's things that kind of transcend like a season. There's a seasonal thing, there's a yearly thing, there's a thing that carries on for years. I think in a long-term point of view, like for instance, I'm wearing British ethnic at the moment, which I'd say is very fashionable. And I don't think it's just a, a British phenomenon. I know we're in Britain, you think you can get kind of self-indulgent. You think, oh, well, everyone's into it because we're here. But actually, Britain is now the economic capital of the world, or so I heard. It's the financial capital of the world. And I think that makes a huge difference. And I think that difference, that affects culture really, doesn't it? Because um, when America was, um, then America was like the biggest influence. But I think people are aping Britain a lot in all sorts of respect. <laughs> it's a bit difficult. I mean, I think Britain isn't run for a capitalist state. I mean, I'm not particularly into capitalism, but for a capitalist state, I think they've done quite a good job of for it to be the, become the financial capital of the world. When I was young, it was like a joke. It was like, it was always like a tacky version of America. Whatever America did, we did cheap. You know, if they had Marilyn Monroe, we had Diana Dawes, you know, like the cheap prostitute looking version. She was brilliant, Diana Dawes, but it was always like the worst version. Or like, oh, France had the Eiffel Tower, so we built the tacky old Blackpool Tower, which I love, but it's always downgraded. My favourite architect, I would say, is Frank Geary. Have you heard of Frank Geary? Yeah, and he did all sorts of things. But it's like somebody's got an egg and they smash it with a hammer and there's all bits and pieces lying all over the place. And that's called deconstructivism. But the weird thing is Frank Geary says he's not deconstructivist, so I can't work that out. But I love deconstructivism, whatever you want to call it, because before deconstructivism in the 80s and a bit of the 90s, it was postmodern, which means things were fragmented. You had a building, then you had another bit next to it that was different and another bit different. Because well, before that, before that, it was everything was unified, like modernism. Everything was joined. It was all geometric and balanced. Then it, it, with postmodern, it became unbalanced. And now you actually dismantle the whole building. Rather than it's different bits, it's fragmented. It's the whole building, the, the whole the substance of things is, is demolished. But interestingly, I read, which was would never interest your viewers, that it actually symbolises the society in Los Angeles that it's a completely fragmented society where everybody, it's 90 miles wide and everybody's kind of not united to anybody else. They're just all over the place. And that, which is actually the way the world's going. People are, when I was a kid, everyone was, you know, it was much more sociable. And now it's people a lot more out for themselves, unfortunately, and just living in their own little worlds and not feeling part of any type of group. I mean, I'm not part of a group in a way, but another way, we're all human beings together, we're all meant to look after each other, look out for each other, but you know, all this insularity, you know, and that's interesting in fashion because when you go out now, there's people are much more removed from each other, which it goes with that architecture, there's a much more removed feeling, you know, people are just, they're in their own little groups and this kind of thing where you, it's not like you go in a club and everyone necessarily wants to know each other. They don't feel like they're in a group because they're in a club. They, they want to be, you get these, oh, this awful idea of buying tables at clubs, which is so naff. And people sit there and they, they sit in their own little table and they've bought a table. It's so tacky. <laughs> I've had a long lingering affair for many years. No one, forget it. We won't go on to that subject. <laughs> anyway, let's talk about fashion though, because it's interesting. Because I was gonna say, I know what I was about to say, that in London, it's interesting because if you came to London years ago, the West End was the fashionable part of London. And people don't know what, you, in America, when you say, you say the West End, they don't know what you're talking about. Or you say the city, they think you mean London. The city in London is obviously, the, the city which is where all the business where where the it's the business center of london like in manhattan you get where all the offices are the city is where all the offices are which is the city which was the oldest part of london then west of the city is the west end where all the stores are 
and it's much more the clubs and stuff. And like the city at night is dead, it's, there's nothing there, it's just a, a wasteland. And then on the right of the city, on the east, is Shoreditch. And that's where all the cool trendy people now have moved from the West End to the East End. And the and West End has become really unfashionable, unfortunately. I still go there, but all, a lot of the cool people are now mingling there. I mean, people used to go to Notting Hill years ago, which was still West, that was in the 60s. All that kind of Beatles era it was there. And then it was still in the West End. But now all these kind of, it's just a really cool trendy area. And there's a big divide, there's two things that happen in the West End that you don't get in the East End. Um, and in the West End, people put money on a pedestal and, and, and they also, um, they, they flaunt wealth and they flaunt sexuality. And flaunting wealth and flaunt sexuality, and flaunting sexuality aren't cool. And in the East End, you don't get it. You don't get these girls looking like old slappers or slags, whatever you want to call it, in the East End. You know, they might, they might dress up freaky and whatever, but they don't look like slags. In the West End, there's all these girls with all bleached hair in a, in a really tacky, in England you say Essex way. Do you know what I mean? It's like Essex girls and bare legs and just tacky. And as I said, people buy tables in West End clubs. You never get that in the East End. Or the, or the idea of driving around in a stretch limo, you wouldn't get that in the East End. It's just so uncool and kind of 80s, 90s. It's 20th century anyway. I think, well, my favourite designer has always been Vivian Westwood. I think she's unbelievable. She always comes out with, and people love putting people down and going, in yeah, she's say, oh yeah, she's had her time. And she's never had her. I go to her shows and there's all this brilliant stuff that she can't put in the shop because no one's going to bleed and bite because she's only sell one of it or something. So, so they mass produce the stuff of hers that's going to sell. But she's got fantastic ideas and she is, the, to me, the best designer, fashion designer in the world in as much as innovative ideas, just everything about her. I love what she does. Can't reach for the sale. <laughs>